So good morning everyone and welcome to morning prayer. I'm a bit behind today and I haven't actually really read the biographies of the people that we are remembering today and they're people I, I don't really know. There's, we, we remember Aylred Abbott who died in 1167. Not a very familiar name is it? Um, I'm just having a quick skim read. Born in Northumberland. Um, he turned his back on. Oh, he was best, he was trained as a lawyer. Um, oh, who's this? It's so left, just coming in. Um, and, and you're sideways on. We can see your arm more than you. Morning, Sola. Anyway, this chap, Elred, um, his remarkable writings earned for him the epithet the English St. Bernard. Um, sorry, you'll have to read up on oh, no, I can't mention really any more about him. And then we also remember another person I've never heard of called Benedict Biscop, a scholar who died in 689. Anyone heard of Benedict Biscop? Oh my gosh, he was a no... Was about the time of feed, if he was at Wearmouth, up that way. Possibly. Um, he was a Northumbrian nobleman in King Oswy's court. Uh, he renounced his position in society and began a life of travelling and pilgrimage. He visited Rome six times, staying in 17 European monasteries. That must have been interesting. Um, finally returned to Northumbria, founded the monastery at Monk Wearmouth in Jarrow. Blah, blah, blah. Um, it's amazing. He went to Rome all those number of times in that in in the in the uh, isn't, amazing, isn't it? And he came back, set up these monasteries, which had a continental flavour. <laughs> 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 Oh, he's a European. He smoothed the transition from Celtic to Roman forms of worship and practice. <coughs> and as the record is having introduced a teacher of a teacher of Roman chants, one of his students, Bede, was oh, to become the foremost oh, historian yeah. in the Saxon Church. Well done, Elizabeth. Um, into it somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, having, having been, um, to, there's a lovely museum place about Bede and the Lindisfarne Gospels and everything up there. It's a beautiful museum you can wander around. Okay. And he, yeah, he followed the rule of St. Benedict. Well, um, yeah, well, there's a... There's quite a lot on both of those people if you care to look them up later, but we remember them today, or we learn about them today, some of us. Um, okay. Rebu, it, Rebu in North Yorkshire is beautiful too, so they, they're two nice parts of the country to go and visit. All right, okay. When we're allowed to. When we're allowed to, when we're allowed to go more than, what is it, seven miles or something, <laughs> before you yeah. start getting into trouble. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Let's start. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous. And for the people shall see your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. <coughs> you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, Anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to read Psalm 8, which is very short. Um, Leslie, do you want to just read that for us? 
O oh Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you should be mindful of him? the son of man, that you should seek him out. You have made him little lower than the angels and crown him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Mm, that's a wonderful hymn of praise, isn't it? For creation. Um, mm. I haven't watched all the new David Attenborough films, but I did watch the first one. And they're always amazing just to see what a beautiful world we have. You know? So many of these things we can never possibly see firsthand ourselves but it's wonderful that these film crews have gone to these remote places and filmed the world mm -hmm. with such care and attention and respect and we can see the natural world um better than yeah. we've ever I would been able to i enjoy those programs but i also admire the cameramen who the patience and the stamina to uh, withstand uh, in the last one they were out in the frozen frozen in arctic filming uh arctic foxes oh. yeah or wolves rather yeah and, and sometimes waiting many hours in horrible conditions just to get frozen, he had icicles from his mus from his beard oh <laughs> No, it is. It's uh, it's wonderful, um, and of course, you know, seeing all that beauty and order kind of not only makes us give glory to God, but kind of makes us want to care and protect that environment, doesn't it? Yes. I love the phrase uh, "little lower than the angels." <laughs> yes. But sometimes uh, nature goes too far. I remember when I was in uh, um, Africa, I got woken up very, uh, uh, very loudly and got out of my tent to see what it was. It was three hippopotamuses having in a bath in the river, just by our tents. Which is very dangerous. They're very dangerous animals. Yeah. But how yeah, there were three huge ones. Really? About, uh, about only about 50 yards from my tent. Um, playing, uh, playing mud baths in the lake. Fantastic, fantastic, yeah. All right, um, let's scroll down and uh, Elizabeth, do you think you could read Amos 2 for it? It's going to be very similar to Amos 1, I fear, but let's read it. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab and for four I will not revoke the punishment because he burned to lime the bones of the king of Edom. So I will send a fire on Moab, and I shall devour the strongholds of Kirath, and Moab shall die in amid, amid uproar. Amid shouting and the sound of the trumpet, I will cut off the ruler from its midst, and will kill all of its officials with him, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not revoke the punishment because they have rejected the law of the Lord and have not kept his statutes. But they have been laid astray, led astray by the same lies after which their ancestors walked. So I will send a fire on Judah and it shall devour the strongholds of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not revoke the punishment because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. 
they who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and push the afflicted out of the way. Father and son go into the same girl, so that my holy name is profaned. They lay themselves down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge, and in the house of their gods they drink wine bought with fines they imposed. Yet I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of cedars, and who was as strong as oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath, and I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, and led you for forty years in the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. And I raised up some of your children to be prophets, and some of your youths to be Nazarites. It is not indeed so, O people of is it not so, O people of Israel, says the Lord. But you made the Nazarites drink wine, and command the prophets, saying, You shall not prophesy. So I will press you down in your place, just as a cart presses down when it is full of sheaves. Flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not retain their strength, nor shall the mighty save their lives. Those who handle the bow shall not stand, and those who are swift of foot shall not save themselves, nor shall those who ride horses save their lives, and those who are stout of heart among the mighty shall flee away naked on that day, says the Lord. Okay, so as you remember yesterday, uh, Amos 1, we had judgment of like neighboring tribes and this continues, um, judgment on Moab, but then on Judah and Israel too, um, which, you know, is the saddest of all because they, um, perhaps of all peoples, should have been following God's way. They were the ones who God had saved from Egypt. And uh, so it's rather saddening that they too seem to have fallen into ungodly ways. You know? And uh, so the judgment extends to them as well. And so it continues. And so it continues. Yeah. All right. um, so let's scroll down to continuing to read uh, from 1 Corinthians. Um, Isola, would you like to read that one? Okay. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For sins in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness, foolishness of our proclamation, proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call. Brothers and sisters, not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. <clears throat> God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are. So that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus. 
who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that as it is written let the one who boast boast in the Lord. Thank you, Vesela. So, um, what thoughts about this passage? <coughs> it just shows the frailty of man hmm. that we're nothing, really. Sometimes, I mean, I remember that the few days that was a bit, I was down and I could not eat. Mm. And, and I saw that it's only by grace that you feel, you know, you have, you have appetite for food and you mm. want to eat. Mm. You know, because I didn't have any control over it. I was hungry, but I just couldn't eat. Mm. Mm. You know? And every time I just look back, it just shows that really we don't have any, any power, really, none. Mm. Mm. Other than in Christ Jesus. Exactly, yeah. Mm. Which is, when you read that like that, if you think about it, yes, um, you can understand Paul saying to people that I believe in Jesus Christ who was crucified. He, was, he died and he rose again. Mm. You, you can see them say, uh-huh. What was he talking about? Well, absolutely, yeah. That's absolutely ridiculous. I know, that's why the first verse is so powerful, isn't it? For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to yes. us who are being us saved, are being is saved by the power of God. Absolutely. And that's what we have to remember, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. For God's weakness is stronger than human strength, yeah? Mm. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. Mm -hmm. mm. I think it's very impressive to hear um, this message, really, of humility from someone who, who in a way was so powerful mm -hmm. and achieved so much. Yes. Who could have boasted yeah. by earthly standards. Mm. I think that's because Paul always remembers his origins, which is, you know, of being a persecutor of the church, yeah? And, uh, you know, I think that grounds him in humility. Yeah that he feels <clears throat> very much that his life has been saved in Christ, yeah? Hmm. Good, all right. Well, let's scroll down and read our responsory. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Let's pray. Lord, we continue to pray for our world um, and so much suffering at the moment. We're very focused on what's going on in this country, but around the world, um, there are similar situations actually far worse. Um, people who are sick, who struggling to get the care they need and lord we just lift you all those working in the health service in this country and elsewhere um, we ask for more healing we ask for we thank you for um, science that has led to the vaccine lord 
we want to see people more and more people protected and spared from this terrible illness in jesus name amen, amen. i lift you those who are to prayer by name philip evans jenny figaro christopher and vivian gomez evelyn hannah pete jadhav anna lee eloise Lybrand, ulrika llewellyn joe martinez lisa and ray moller betty seaman the prescotts and children at hope primary school john walton and dear sharma lord bring hope and healing and comfort in the power of jesus name amen wow. Dear Lord, be with all who put themselves in the path of danger for our sake, including today, Jazz and Sam and all their colleagues everywhere. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Lord, your word says your grace is sufficient for us, O Lord. Father, continue to pour your grace upon us, O Lord, that Father and make your power be made perfect in our weaknesses, O Lord. Strengthen us, O Lord, on, on the days that we are weak, O Lord, and the days that our faith may be failing us, O Lord. Help us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who endowed Aylred, the abbot, with the gift of Christian friendship and the wisdom to lead others in the way of holiness, grant your people that same spirit of mutual affection so that in loving one another, we may know the love of Christ and rejoice in the eternal possession of your supreme goodness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, using the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer, as our Savior taught us, uh, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed Thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will Lord, on her as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we should give those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Amen. That was such a wonderful collect today, wasn't it? Yes. Um, asking you know, for, for the gift of Christian friendship, wisdom to lead others in a way of holiness, you know, that in loving one another, we may know the love of Christ and rejoice in the eternal possession of your supreme goodness. Beautiful prayer, yeah? Very nice. Yeah, well, have a lovely day. You too. Thank you. Um, and you. Oh, don't forget that we've got morning, uh, not morning, but <coughs> uh, I have a reading group at 10. So, you know, if you haven't got much to do this morning, why not join us at 10, yeah? All right. Bye-bye. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.